In the previous lesson, we have been building an HTTP connection. We have an async task with an HTTP connection, and we are passing the result, converting it from input stream to a string. This is quite long, and this is like a very manual process. We have libraries like OKHTTP, OK which is a HTTP library, that apart from being more efficient than the Android HTTP connection, and apart from improving the speed, it simplifies a lot of the code. So for example, if you see an example here to, to download the URL and print the content, the only thing that we have to do is create a OK HTTP client, create a request, and cre create an object response, which will be that HTTP client executing the request. So that's all that we have to do. So basically, it's these three lines of code and the HTTP client creation. In total, four lines of code, which is much less than all of this. So let's start removing all of this part and using OK HTTP. I'm going to leave the method doing background empty and I'm going to start using OK HTTP. I can go to build.gradle and add this dependency, but I'm going to show you how to do this manually. There are two ways. One, you can click on the project structure here and you can double click on, right click on the project and click on open module settings. If we go to dependencies, the dependencies are the libraries of our application are. So for that, add a new library dependency from Maven, search for OK HTTP, and uh, we have it here. It has to be from Square App OK HTTP, because it's the one that we want from Square. OK, now that we have the library, we can create a OK HTTP client. Android Studio is going to build again. And when it finishes, we are ready to do this. So, OK HTTP client, it should be right here, the first one from Square App. Client equals new client. New OK HTTP client. If we look at here, what this is doing is creating a request. We come here and we copy this part inside of the method run, we don't need that. We just need to specify our URL on the request. And we have to complete everything, just write it again, response. Okay, so first the URL, we say that it was Reddit URL. Now we are doing a request to Reddit. This is going to return a response, and then we are going to print this string, which is what the method doing background is going to return. So the only thing that we need to do is mm, create a try catch method because this thing can can go wrong. So we can just copy the return inside the try catch. And then we just return here null. So in, this is going to do the response. If the response is OK, this is going to return this straight. And the execution of the method is going to finish here. If there is any problem doing this, this is going to jump to the catch. This is going to print the error. And then it's going to return null. So that's all. We don't need the input string. We don't need anything. In just this block of code, we are doing the same as we were doing before. So let's try this. So we launch the app, and as we can see, we are printing the result of the web page. Everything like we were doing before, but just with a few lines of code. And more efficient in network terms. OK. So if we take a look at the web page, It says that this can do 
synchronous request and a synchronous request. So basically here we are doing a synchronous request which means that we are waiting for the execution to finish so until we have the response from the website we are just waiting here. That's why we are using a async task and a background thread. But it could be another way to do this without any async task. So basically now the library okay, HTTP is going to create the background thread for us and it's going to tell us when the connection has finished. So we don't need to worry about creating the async task ourselves. If we just take a look at the OKHTTP OK website, they have a recipes website. So you have here the most common case that you will need. For example, we have done a synchronous get, and now we are going to see how to do a synchronous get. So basically, what it does is just create a OKHTTP OK client like before. It creates a request exactly like before, and now it creates a new call and in queue a callback. What is this callback? This callback is what is going to be called when the connection has finished. So this is basically like the on post execute on the async task. Remember that we do all the working doing background and when we finish we call on post execute. So this is basically the same. We are going to create a callback which is just an on post execute. In this case it has two parts on response or on failure. If we do the connection and it fails, this is going to call the method on failure, so this code is going to be executed. If we do the connection and the connection is successful, this is going to call on response and this code is going to be executed. Start building it ourselves. So we we'll continue creating another okay, HTTP client. We need to create a request. I'm going to copy it and just use the Reddit URL. And then to the client, the OK HTTP client, we need to say that we need an async request which is done with new call. So we're doing a new call to the client with our request and I want to set this asynchronous on a, back, uh, on a callback. So we are going to create a new callback and when we create this, these two methods are already created for us. So this is going to make the call to the Reddit URL. If the call is successful, this will be called. So what do we need to do? We are going to have the response here. So here we are just going to log the response I'm going to convert the response to a string Ok, so basically this is going to connect and log the response in the console So we can see how the application is opening this is making the connection. Now if I go to the console, I can see the response coming. If I wanted to see what is on it, I will get the body. So if you compare this piece of code, which is just a request and a callback. This is much more easier than when we had on the previous lesson. We had the async task, the input string converted to a string. This is just efficient and very clear. So now you can really understand what is the advantage of a library like this.